really good two meter antenna. Well, friend Don has one. We like to call it uh, Don's two meter extreme beam. That's what we like to call it. It's, uh, it's kind of it's kind of legend around here and all. The, the what? The two meter extreme beam. Don's two meter extreme beam. That's what it's called. Two meter and, extreme beam. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a legend in these parts. Uh, everybody everybody knows about Don's ten antenna. You know, I mean, he can he, you know. It, just everybody. Uh, well, is, is this like a quarter wave or what is this? No, no, it's a, it's a full wave. It's um, it's basically a quad with an extra element, a pentabeam. I don't know what you'd call that exactly. So it's got but, five? Yeah, it's got five. They're circular elements and it's full wave. What do you think about that? I think we should build it. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like plenty. Let's do this thing. Let's go to Lowe's. Okay, let's go. Repeater maker, that's actually the end of it. I've got a repeater maker and a uh, and a what? Oh, kid. And you just buy a couple of like, short ones. Like that. Like this, you know, around about a half inch or quarters of an inch. Okay, those are going to be a lot. No, I don't even open them. They're not. They're way too big. These are the shortest ones. Yes. That's not, that's not bad. By the time you put a washer on it, you know, and all, and the bolt, and the bolt. Let's get to forty. No, no, that's the longer ones. That's the shorter ones. Look at those. That's the one and a half. Got your reflector. You got your driven element. Your thing for your down tube. You got your director, 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 so yeah, it should be good. Thirty-five feet. Yeah, thirty-five feet. All right. Well, anyway. That'll work. All right. Now, dial rod. All right. We got six thirty second half inch. All right. We got six thirty second half inch. Twelve of those. Six thirty second locking nuts. Ten of those. Those might be hard to put in on the uh, inside diameter of that pipe, though. It's going on really hard because they're locking. Well, I'm going to hold it with a pair of boxes. You don't know what we have to. Flat washers, longer nuts, nylon lock nuts, pan Phillips machine heads. I don't have no sand, do you? Let's see. The one side is up here. That's a white, I can believe. It's a white. Yeah, he said it was sanded. Black, it looks like. Black it is. Okay, so grand total. 4964 for all those materials. Not a bad deal. Basically 50 bucks. Okay, we've uh, we've completed the reflector, the director, and the the driven element and the two directors. We, and we still have to do one more director and then the cross pieces that connect them together and the wire loops of, of each element. And that's what we have to complete. Okay. Cat's digging it. Okay, tell him why you had to split that. Uh, because we didn't buy one that's already split. <laughs> oh, we had to split it. Uh, um, it's going to cradle. Gonna cradle the antenna like this and uh, we might still have to go buy one to split because I didn't do a very good job at that 
long and uh, and then we're gonna have to hose clamp it right here and right here and that's how it's connected that's how you can change the orientation from vertical to horizontal for sideband all right we had a little bit of conflict of interest on that piece you just saw I think it should be cut it has a dowel rod right in the center for support I think it should be cut Landon thinks we should do something else what do you think I think we should go see if they have a split tee that we can uh, buy and just lay the thing in there and uh, just clamp it on instead of trying to cut that rod because it'll make the it'll make the whole antenna stronger. If you cut the rod, the antenna will have it's going to have a tendency to sag in the middle. We're going to put a wooden dowel rod down the center, but uh, exactly. So how's a wooden dowel rod going to sag? Well, I just think it's going to be stronger with the uh, if we if we do it uh, if we do it with a solid piece there. And, uh, and, and I disagree. And, I disagree, but at the same time, we'll find out because I think that if you get the cut T, the cut T is going to have the bridge in it anyway. There's not going to be a real benefit to having the cut T. So the cut T is like an issue. I think that if we use hose clamps and put it in the center, it would be better. And again, I don't know if it's for cut T. Yeah, well, the. Uh... Well, the issue is we don't know if the cutsy has a ridge in the center or not. If it doesn't have a ridge, it'll work great. If it does have the ridge, well, then we're, well, then we'll either decide to buy one or not buy one or go from there. But if it doesn't have a ridge, we can just lay it in there, put two ghost plants on it. It'll be, it'll be even better than uh, what it was to begin with. Well, I'm not sure, but I, I would like to cut the mask, hose clamp it in, and put the dowel right in the center. I don't see a sag issue. We're going to see how it works out. Okay, so they do have the split T. All right, that'll work better. I have to admit, that's the best. We can just, we can just pull that one element off, slide this on right there, and that'll work perfect. So we had to come back. We had to add 10 more feet to PVC. We had to add that. And let's see if we got, uh, that's got a screw in thing. Oh, oh no. Uh oh. So it added another two dollars and two cents. Landon was right. City does not have a, a groove here. Don't try to make your own. It does not work. Go buy this because that's what you're going to need to make a smooth installation on it. The other stuff, you know, it'll turn out terrible. You'll have to have this because it's usually threaded. So you have to couple it like that, and that'll do that part. So we'll get that over with. Back to the antenna. Y'all should kick back, relax, and just roll, roll with me. All right, center of gravity. Probably going to be right up against it, isn't it? Close to it. Yeah, as close as you can get. So after you glue that, center of gravity will be right there. Yeah, that's about as close as you're going to get to center of gravity. Okay, all right. I'm just, uh, I'm just marking the lines right here. Uh, so we'll make sure we have everything flat when we go to glue it all together. Orientation marks here, which we hope should uh, help us help us put them together correctly when we get to, when we get to that point. Okay, we just got her glued together here, and all it's looking uh, it's looking pretty good, and we're about ready to put the elements on there. So, and we'll get it up in here and see how it does. Watch what you man. Easy. element is 78 and three quarters and that's going to be 
from the bend to the other bend right there will be 78 and 3 quarters from bend to bend when it's done. I've left some extra, I've marked it where it's going to be exactly the right. This is the dripping element. And this is the reflector. What was the measurement on the reflector? It was 83. The reflector is 83. From the bend down there to this mark here, 83 inches. All right, director one is 74 and 1 8. And the mark is right there. The end of that loop, 74 1 8. Director one. Okay, director two here is uh, 72 and 1 8, and of course, the same as always, that's measured from your loop down, and then we're going to make a loop in the other end. So it's the actual length of the entire. Where'd the mark? Where'd the mark? All right, there's the mark right there. Made a mark, and we left a little extra right there. So, okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just bending this around here. Okay, this is director three. Again, measured from the measured from the loop and to the line, and you leave a little extra so you can make a loop. The loop don't count in the measurements. And if you buy 35 feet like we did, you should have about this much left over when you're finished. On this cap, we're going to put the hole for the wire. There's no support on one side, so. We're not going to use the full depth of that cap. We're going to leave a little space so it can press up against the wire when it's on there. So we're not going to use the full depth. We're going to drill the hole slightly back, not the full depth of the of the half inch that is absorbed by that cap. So we're going to leave a little push room so it can have some friction up against it. Okay, we're using a 5 30 seconds drill bit here. It's the one closest that we can find to the size that we need. Uh, go down one, it's too small. Go up one, it's too big. Uh, it don't fit perfect, but we're going to use those caps to wedge it in there. So um, that's about as, about as close as we can get right there. Straight up and down. All right, the uh, screws we got were a little short. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna flatten the copper to make these screws fit. So you should probably get a little bit longer screw than what we told you. So you can fix it. So that's a lot flatter. And it should go in there, we'll hit it a few more times. Push that on a little more. Push that on a little more. So we have to do just a little bit more straightening on this antenna, but this is pretty much it. This is the reflector down here. The, so we'll point this direction. Reflector, direct, reflector, driven element, director, director, director. And we just need to do a bit of, uh, a little bit of shaping of the elements, but it's starting to rain now, so we're going to get in out of rain. All right, we have to put these on top and bottom right here. You can see we got the radiator on the top and the shield on the bottom, and that goes on that one right there. So that's where it goes. Well, just get me in, uh, just get me in antenna finished up here. Probably the last step. We're about to stick it on the SWR meter and uh, see how it's going to do and. Uh, then we'll try to get it on the uh, for Dwarf's analyzer. All right, we've got everything hooked up. We've got a handy talkie, so we're going to put some power through it and uh, check the SWR. 
Not even moving. So it's not even moving on the SWRs. Go ahead, Landon. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna hook it up to my mobile. I'm gonna have him in the back, and uh, whenever I turn the corner, he's just gonna keep it, make sure it's always pointed the right direction there. If we have to switch, I'm just gonna tap on the glass there and tell him to point time point towards Little Rock or whatever, and he's just gonna be back there pointing it around wherever we need it. Well, that'll work. Might be a little cool, but it'll work. Yeah, we might have to make a parody video about that. I don't know. We got the antenna working and SWR one to one, amazing. So we're gonna go put it on an analyzer. So we're gonna have a little fun in the process. We're gonna stick it in the back of a vehicle and go mobile with it. <laughs> so we'll see how that works out. Transporting. <laughs> this is our manual rotation setup. <laughs> yeah, so Darren's gonna be in the back while we're working, and you know, we're gonna try to work mobile. We're gonna hook it up in the mobile and put a little power to it and see how it reacts. In the worst possible configuration, I mean, that's probably the worst place ever put a beam, so we'll see how bad it is on this thing. There's a little bit, that's about a... Uh, well, that's because I think you get the mic close to the... No? No? Yeah, well, we moved down band a little bit, you know. Oh, you changed frequency? Yeah, I changed frequency. Yeah, so that's about uh, that's about a 1.7. 1. 1. Not bad in the back of a truck. Hey, <laughs> it's 5 OD Friday, you can clear. What it's, that's what it's resonant. That's, that's the resonant. 150. Now down at uh, 145, you got three to one. 140. Let's see. Now 145.0, you're a little over three to one. 146.0, you're about two and a half. 147, you're about two. 148, you're in the range. So it's a little high then. Mm-hmm. Needs what? to be just a little longer. Is that perfect resonance? That, that's the best, it, yeah, that's perfect. Now we've gone down to, at 140, let's go to five. You're about 1.7 to one. That's not bad, is it? 1.6, oops, I passed it. You're about 1.2, 140, 7.0, you're a little over 1.1, 1 .1, 148, dead on, 149, you're close, 150, you get up to 1.2, Got some range. All right, I'm gonna have to increase the length on the radiator about that much to get it to hit 146 megahertz, which is what I'm trying to shoot for. That's where most of the two meter action is. I'm gonna change the size of the other radiators. We went with the size wire, which was different from the original plans that we that we had. So it's obvious that that has changed the frequency just a little bit. So we're gonna modify the antenna to match frequency. Might be able to check it again, might not, but I know that I'm really close anyway, and the SWRs are fine, 1.5, around 145 megahertz, no problem. So we're going to go ahead and make it a little bit better, though, just for a good measure. Got it to the right length, and I've got it cocked, I've got it sealed, and I should be ready to put the thing up in the air. I oversealed it a little bit, as you can see, but I wanted to make sure that the coax never has any issues. I don't want any problems with the coax. No moisture in the coax, so it should be done, and uh, we'll post the exact lengths for you so that 
you want to replicate this, you're more than welcome to give it a try. It certainly works very well. Hey, it's the uh, end of the day here. We just got the antenna up. Never enough hours in the day. It's dark and all. So we, uh, we just got it up in the air and uh, we're about to see uh, what it will do here and all this. Uh, this is queued up here. Okay, no SWR on the key up there. So uh, let's see if we can get anybody on here now. We just, just got a little handy talkie here putting in about, uh, about four watts into it. AF5 OD. Hey Landon, what you up to now? AE5 UN. Hey Don, we just got this uh, antenna up in the air here. I uh, was wanting to maybe try to do uh, some simplex work with you and uh, see what's up. We got it up about maybe 24, 25 feet here. Ask him if he's due north of here. We're pointed due north right now. Uh, are you due north of here, or what? Uh, which direction are you? We're pointed north right now. Yeah, yeah, that would be about right. Maybe just a hair to the west, but uh, not much. Uh, let's see. No, I'm, north ought to be pretty well uh, correct, I would think. Anyway, that should cover it. And uh, have you tried hitting the Little Rock repeaters yet? No, no, I hadn't tried that yet and no. all. We thought we'd try to get you on Simplex here. We got the, uh, got this on camera here. Uh, you want to switch over to 520 here? Okay, I'll see you on 520. AE5, you in. AE5, you in, monitoring. AF5, OD. Two bars, okay. Well, we're shooting about four watts. About 22 miles, something like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's around 20, I would say, from the conservative banker. Uh, a good 15, anyway. Okay, well, that's good to know there. And all, yeah, we're yeah we're putting about four watts to it, so uh, it seems to be doing pretty good there, I think. I, I would think so. There's just a little bit of uh, background hiss, but uh, that's normal for that power and this distance. So, uh, sounds like you're doing pretty good. I'm running about 10 watts at the moment. Tell me how we got it up there. Okay, that sounds good. I was trying to get you dialed in a little bit more here. Okay, I'm going to get that. Okay, there's, uh, I'm running about 6 watts here. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, I'll try to get it dialed in a little bit here. Just uh, keep talking there for a second. Okay, yeah, it should be very directional, so uh, you can uh, be curious when you're there and, and uh, nail it down pretty good. And that should help you out a little bit. I think that's a little bit better right there. Um, and all the, uh, so that's, uh, so that's pretty good. That's, uh, Let's have you come back in. Am I any, am I any louder? Yeah, yeah that brought up another uh, new desk unit. Wow. Uh, got four bars on you now. <laughs> Almost half scale. So that's not bad at all for four watts in that distance. Well, we put together the antenna and all, and it's uh, called Don's 2 meter extreme dream beam. And uh, that was uh, Don we was talking to earlier on the radio. At, um, AE5UN call sign. He, uh, we talked to him on 520 from Pangburn, from Higginson to Pangburn there, that's around 20 miles probably, 22 miles, something like that. And then we were able to get into the Little Rock repeater, which is probably about 50 miles. So. No, closer to 60, because it's West Little Rock. So, 4 watts, I could never do that with the J-Pole, which is actually higher than this uh, beam, so I would say that the performance on the, on the Extreme Dream Beam is amazing. So, uh, if you want to build it, we're going to show you the dimensions here and you can put it together and hopefully you'll have as much luck as we did it certainly seems to perform well
Oh, hope to hear you on the air. 73 is to you.